Hello, hello, everyone. My name is Candy Fritch. I am the president of Dell Master Speakers, and I am the contest chair for today. I want to thank everybody for joining us today. I am so excited that we are hosting this contest and that we are giving the opportunity to so many of our members to have the experience of competing and that we will be sending the first place winner of each of two categories onto the area contest. I am super excited. I do want to take just a second to acknowledge dignitaries that are here with us. The easy ones to pick out are Brian Thrasher and Ava Tweedy. They are area managers from other areas. And I know Ava is with Area K-12. Unfortunately, Brian, I'm sorry, I don't know which area you're with, but I do want to acknowledge you for being with us. Are there other dignitaries in the group other than guests, of course? Awesome. With that said, I also want to acknowledge the guests that are here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us and, and seeing our competition today. We are so happy to have everybody here with us today. I'm going to run through just a couple of slides so we can see what the plan is for today. First, as you can see, I'm making my opening remarks. Once I'm done with I that. Cannot I cannot see. Not sure. see. Oh, well, let me fix that. I bet you can now. Now we can. Thank you so much. Correct screen, yes? Awesome. Yep. Thank you, Ava. So after opening remarks, I will turn it over to Bianca Covio. She is our Toastmaster for the day, and she will manage the majority of the contest after that. From that, she will manage the opening and facilitate table topics contest. After the table topics contest is complete, we will have our international speech contest. After that, she will do a fantastic interview of the candidates, which I know will be wonderful. We will then do an additional recognition of the contest team, call for announcements, and then we'll turn it over to Ava as chief judge for a presentation of awards. I do want to take just a quick moment to announce the contest team that's serving today to host the contest. As I said a moment ago, my name is Candy Fritch. I am the contest chair. Our chief judge today is Ava Tweedy. Ballot counter for today, Natalie Barker. Timer one, Veronica Valdivia. Timer two, Marco Gordia. Gordillo. I didn't say that very well. I apologize, Marco. Zoom Master and Sergeant at Arms, Brian Thrasher, and again, Toastmaster, Bianca Cobio. I appreciate all of your help and support for today. Thank you, everyone, very much. And with that, I will mute myself and turn everything over to Bianca for a while. Thank you, Candy. I am so excited to serve as your Toastmaster today. I am newer to Toastmasters, but I have so much appreciation for everything that this group represents. And I love opportunities like this where everybody just kind of brings their, their everything that they are, just whoever they are, and have put so much time and effort into, into preparing for these, for these contests and everybody just celebrates all of the wonderful work uh, of the team. So I could not be more excited to serve as your Toastmaster today for these contests. The table topics contest is, we'll start with that. And this will consist of a series of timed one to two minute responses to the same topic. And this will be judged by our panel of judges. The contestants and the judges have certified their eligibility. The contest chair and the chief judge have confirmed the eligibility of the contestants and the judges. The winner will represent the club at Area K-12 contest on Saturday, March 4th in the afternoon from 2 to 5 p.m. This will be a virtual contest. And then the area at Division 12 contest on Saturday, March 25th, this will also be a virtual conference. And then division at the District 55 contest, which will be during the conference from April 28th through 30th in Austin. This will be hybrid. 
These proceedings are designed to ensure that we run a fair contest and that each contestant is given a level playing field on which to compete. The following announcements are made in the interest of having a distraction-free environment for contestants. Please place all cell phones and other devices that make noise either off or on silent. Please mute yourself and remain on and remain muted unless you are asked to respond to the contest officials. Video recording is allowed only if the contestants and the contest chair have given their approval in advance. The Zoom host will record the contest at the direction of the contest chair. Once the contest has begun, members of the audience are asked to refrain from leaving or uh, re-entering the main Zoom room or from public chatting. If you must leave, please do so during the times of silence between contestant speeches. Madam Contest Chair, are all the con contestants present? They are. And Madam Chief Judge, have all the contest officials been briefed and are we ready to proceed with the contest? We are ready to proceed. In order to allow the judges time to mark their judging forms, we will have one minute of silence after each contestant speech. And we will have silence after the last contestant speech until all the results are collected. Timekeepers, Will one of you signal me when one minute has elapsed between contestant speeches? Yes, Yanka. <laughs> Sorry. Great. The speaking order for the contest was determined earlier by randomly selecting names. The order for the contest will be. Michelle Jones, Josh Tyus, Pablo Arias, Morton Lutera. Contestants will be sent to a virtual breakout room, except for the first contestant who will stay in the main room. The other contestants will be brought back one at a time. Each contestant will be introduced only by his or her name, and then I will read the table topic. I will then repeat the table topic and the contestant's name. All contestants may remain in the room after they have responded to the topic. Are there any questions? If not, and the table topics contestants, uh, the table topics contest will now begin. The first contestant will now get ready by unmuting the audio and turning the video camera on the Zoom master will now send the remaining contestants to the virtual breakout room. Can we take the order slide down? Candy, will you stop presenting? Thank you. The, are all the, of, sir, yeah, the contestants are in the breakout room now. Thank you. Michelle Jones, what did you want to be when you grew up? What did you want to be when you grew up, Michelle Jones? Growing up, my biggest excitement, the one thing that I truly wanted to be that got me up in the morning and just made me want to be a bigger and better person, oddly enough, was Saturday Night Live. Watching Saturday Night Live every single week with my family members was a favorite pastime of mine. When we watch Saturday Night Live, one, it's funny. 
everybody on there. You've got your favorite. I'm sure everyone here has watched Saturday Night Live at some point in your life or any type of sketch comedy show. There's always those people that just make you laugh and they end up being part of your family in some way. So I wanted to be part of Saturday Night Live because not only was it fun, but they got to use an enormous amount of creativity. Not only are you an actor, but you also get to help build the script and write it out and truly just change the lives of others. I remember these people just like they were family members of mine. So one thing that I truly wanted to be growing up was an actress on Saturday Night Live or even a host. If I just happened to be an actress in some other way and they brought me on to host, I'll do that. <laughs> and I would do it well. And I hope that I would be one of those people that got the jackets that you got to be a host five times in a row. That's my dream. And that is what I've been doing in my current role is using those three things, being able to have fun, be creative and change the lives of other people is what I get to do in my daily life. So in a way, I am living out my childhood dream of being a Saturday Night Live actress. One minute of silence, please. And Sergeant at Arms, please have the next contestant return to the main room. The next contestant will now get ready by unmuting the audio. Josh Thias, what did you want to be when you grew up? What did you want to be when you grew up? Josh Thias. When I grew up, I wanted to help other people and serve the community. And my dream occupation, actually, at the age of seven or eight was actually being a police officer. Uh, that was what I wanted to be when I grew up. And the reason I thought of that is, you know, police officers are friendly people who know the community. Um, I'm a social guy. I like to network. I like to go out of my way to help other people. And the whole idea of driving around a, a neighborhood, driving around, you know, an entire city really fascinated me when I was a little kid. So I just thought, you know, age eight or seven, you know, when you start to understand how a, a major city layout, you know, how the streets kind of connect, I thought, well, that'd be really cool. Every day would be different. You know, I don't want to just go be at some office or do, a, you know, an office job where I'm isolated. I want to have the ability to, you know, help inspire change. Of course, we see that in movies and in Hollywood, but I really wanted to bring that uh, to real life. So that was really my dream occupation uh, growing up and, you know, it manifests itself in more than just the job. I wanted to, you know, be that knight shining armor character for other people to uh, help assist in times of need, you know. So those are just some examples of kind of what I was looking what I was looking for when I was younger. And as I continued to grow up, of course, my life took uh, you know, a different direction and ended up working in the engineering field. Uh, but at the end of the day, I still want to help other people and make the world a better place. So uh, having been a student at the University of Texas uh, at Austin, uh, our motto is what starts here changes the world. So I hope that the occupation of building, being a police officer and now working as an engineer can make the world a better place. Thank you very much. One minute of silence, please. Sergeant at Arms, please have the next contestant return to the main room.
The next contestant will now get ready by unmuting their audio. Can you hear me? Pablo Arias, what did you want to be when you grew up? What did you want to be when you grew up? Pablo Arias. An astronaut who would not want to be an astronaut. Not a firefighter or a policeman, an astronaut who as a kid doesn't want to leave his, their home away from the nagging of their parents and go discover some new world somewhere. An astronaut is just so obvious. I just can't understand how any other kid would not want to be an astronaut when they grew up. Why would I want to be an astronaut? Yes, that's kind of like a little bit joking about leaving my home and my parents, but it's a little bit of truth in that. But an astronaut for me made sense because it was adventure. I like to do crazy things. What, uh, re what is riskier than being an astronaut, right? One, uh, one out of a hundred will, will, rockets will explode in midair and that sounded fun. And that's what I wanted to do. But the second reason was uh, gravity, right? Uh, the lack of gravity, that sense of, of flying, of uh, weightlessness that uh, I still dream about. I have my dreams where I can fly and I can fly wherever I want. I have my lucid dreams where I can decide where I want to fly and talk to, etc. So yes, an astronaut is what I've always wanted to, <laughs> to do when I was a kid. And I still do. I still joke with my wife and I say, if I stop working at Dell, I might apply at NASA. Maybe I could be the oldest astronaut to go to Mars. There's still a chance. I watch every single rocket launch of SpaceX, which is in the 138, I think, so far. I watch every single one of them. There are Falcon 9 launches, not the previous ones. So I'm really into astrophysics and space and et cetera. But there's another reason why I want to be an astronaut, which is the influence that I could have on other people and, and a position to be able to, to pass a positive message to others. One minute of silence, please. Sergeant at arms, please have the next contestant return to the main room. The next contestant will now get ready by unmuting the audio. Morton Lutera, what did you want to be when you grew up? What did you want to be when you grew up, Morton Lutera? I grew up in Norway, Oslo, about 40 minutes north of the capital on the country. My dad came from a family of farmers in Norway and uh, I was intrigued by animals and policemen and firemen, kind of the regular boy stuff. One day, my parents gave me an electrical vehicle to, to drive, not a big one, just a small one that was connected to this uh, cord. Later on, I got one with an antenna. One time I got an electrical boat and I thought, okay, this boat propeller can spin so fast with 
the two batteries that were connected to it, I wonder what happened if I take this engine apart and then build it back in and maybe find a way to, for the propeller to, to spin faster. So I took the little boat, got my screwdriver, took the little pieces apart, and then I put it back together again. And they had two prongs that went to the batteries. And I thought maybe if I put this into the socket in the wall, the propeller will spin really fast. And I did. The hair on my head went And I, inside of my nostrils, I felt a little burnt flavor. I wonder where it came from. The propeller spent so fast. Since then, I always wanted to get into electronics, computers, and the excitement of life that happens when innovation takes place. I am so grateful for every one of my experiences and opportunity to learn and grow and every day become a little bit better. May we please have silence until all the judges, judges' results have been collected. Judges, please communicate with the chief judge when you have completed them, and the chief judge will confirm to me when all results have been received.
All right, before we move on to the international speech contest, can we please have a round of applause for all of the contestants who competed in table topics? Amazing. And now the international speech contest. This will consist of a series of timed five to seven minute speeches that will be judged by a panel of judges. The contestants and the judges have certified their eligibility. The contest chair and the chief judge have confirmed the eligibility of contestants and the judges. As I said before, and as uh, Ava has so kindly noted in the chat, the winner will represent the club at the Area K-12 contest on Saturday, March 12th from two to five. This will be a virtual contest. And then area at the Division 12 contest on Saturday, March 25th, also a virtual contest. And then division at the District 55 contest will be during the conference April 28th through 30th in Austin, which will be a hybrid contest. These proceedings are designed to ensure that we run a fair contest and that each contestant is given a level playing field on which to compete. The following announcements are made in the interest of having a distraction-free environment for contestants. Please place all cell phones, ensure all your cell phones and other devices that make noise are either off or on silent. Please mute yourself and remain muted unless you are asked to respond to the contest officials. Video recording is allowed only if the contestant and the contest chair have given their approval in advance, the Zoom host will record the contest at the direction of the contest chair. Once the contest has begun, members of the audience are asked to refrain from leaving and or re-entering the main Zoom room or from public chatting. If you must leave, please do so during the times of silence between contestant speeches. Madam contest chair, are all the contestants present? They are. Madam Chief Judge, have all the contest officials been briefed and are we ready to proceed with the contest? Yes, we are. Great. In order to allow the judges time to mark their judging forms, we will have one minute of silence after each contestant's speech and we will have silence after the last contestant speech until all the ballots have been submitted to the chief judge. Timekeeper, will one of you signal me when one minute has elapsed between contestant speeches? We will. The speaking order for the contest was determined earlier by randomly selecting names. The order for the contest will be Carmen Hill, Doug Hansen. I will introduce each contestant only by his or her name and the title of the speech. I will then repeat the title of the speech and the contestant's name. All contestants may remain in the room during this contest. Are there any questions? If not, the international speech contest will now begin. Carmen, are you ready? I am ready. So please, everybody confirm um, that you are on mute. Carmen Hill, Micro Dreams, The Big Dream Alternative. Micro Dreams, The Big Dream Alternative, Carmen Hill. In the 1964 musical, Man of La Mancha, We've all heard this very famous line of a song, and it starts out, to dream the impossible dream. But what if getting to dream these big impossible dreams is not really attainable for everyone? What if there's family? What if there's resources that you don't have? What if there are connections that you need that you really can't make? Do you, in the words of Lang Langston Hughes, do your dreams dry up like a raisin in the sun? Or even worse, as the poem goes to say, do your dreams just explode? Well, I'm here with good news. Your dreams do not have to dry up like a raisin in the sun. 
and your dreams do not have to explode. What I'm proposing is the thought of micro dreams. Now, I know some of you are thinking micro dreams. What, what is that? Micro dreams are smaller, scalable, more attainable dreams. Some may be thinking, isn't that a cop out? Like, aren't we supposed to have these big, amazing dreams? And as I mentioned, some, it may be too overwhelming for them to have. Others, it may not be as attainable as we all want to make it. So what do we do in that case? Do we just stop dreaming? No, we keep dreaming, but we make them smaller. We make them more attainable. Let's go back to high school physics. In high school physics, we all learned about the definition of force. And force was this change in momentum per change in time. And I love this definition because when we think of force, we think of something moving forward, something not staying stationary. We've got these two elements. We've got momentum and we've got time. Now, the one thing that we all have figured out in life is that we cannot control time. Time is going to march on with or without us. But what we can control, we can control that momentum. We can control that amount of thing that we give to our efforts that make them move forward. Now, with micro dreams, it's no less the same. It may not be this huge thing that you're trying to push up a hill but we still have momentum. In taking control within one's power, we let this momentum shine and we push forward. I'm going to give you four steps to how to get this micro dream off the ground. Step one, write it out, say it out loud, vision it out, but whatever you do, Get it out there. Get it out in the universe. Get these things that are in your head that you keep telling yourself, I should try this. I should do this. It would be nice if, if they're small, if they're attainable, if there's something that you can work with there, get it out. I had someone just yesterday tell me that she's got these voices in her head and they're all characters. And she's so interested in getting them written down and creating something. I told her, then go for it. Do it. Step two. You want to shift your energy to yes. The biggest dream killer, whether big or a micro dream, is our telling ourselves that we can't do it. No, that is not attainable, that we can't start, that we're too old, that we're too young, that who's going to listen to me? Start saying yes, because what you'll find is once you say yes, then you shift to step three. Knowing that you can get these things done, you then say, well, let me see how. So step three is you start researching. You start looking for those things to make this impossible dream turn a little bit smaller, but more realistic. You start making this micro dream a reality. Step four, this is what I call, instead of sometimes we have this, this huge crew that we have. So uh, instead, I say, get your accountability boo. You don't need that accountability crew where you've got every last person trying to cheer you on because inevitably there are naysayers in our lives. You want that one person that's like, yeah, girl, you got that. You can do that. That's the person that you want. The person who shares your vision or at least shares your heart. They don't have to know the vision, but they have to get excited with you. They have to amp you up. They have to, when you feel like, oh, maybe this wasn't the right idea, they they have to be the ones to say, you got this and I believe in you. For my story, step one, I started visioning out things that I wanted to do. What I found was that there was a common theme. Everything I wanted to do had to do with using my voice. It had to do with empowering people, educating people, inspiring people, but just being seen, being heard, being known, and not for me, but for others. Step two, I said yes. When I was at the ripe old age of 50, I decided, you know what? I hear those commercials on the radio. Guess what? I want to do that. I hear those commercials and those commercials all have voices. Some of them sound like mine and guess what? Some of them don't. I want my voice to be out there. So I said yes to starting as a voiceover artist. Not there yet, but working towards it. So I started researching, found a wonderful group. I am now actively getting ready to launch my voiceover business in March. 
It would not have happened had I listened to that voice in my head that said, no, you too old. You, you've got other priorities. You've, you've got kids. Don't, don't worry about all that. That's not for you right now. Listen to your yes and let your yes be your energy to then drive your research and let your energy for your research then empower you to do those big things that you didn't even think you could do, even if they're smaller than your big dream. In closing, when a dream feels too big and too overwhelming, the answer is not to stop. The answer may be to scale how you dream. Won't you do that? It's okay to start small and it's okay to invest in that micro dream. Won't you start today? The world is waiting for you. The world is cheering you on and so am I. Thank you. One minute of silence, please. Excellent. Doug, are you ready? I am ready. Wonderful. Doug Hansen, what's in a name? What's in a name? Doug Hansen. So as I've already been introduced, my name is Doug Hansen. Actually, my name is Douglas Sean Hansen. And I think that I like names because names carry a lot of history. Um, in the old days, we were known as, you know, Doug, son of Joseph, son of Al, son of whatever, and it, it became complicated. And so over time, our names have changed. Now my last name is just, you know, a representative of my family, clan, or the group that I belong to. My family has a lot of history. My father was a lieutenant commander in the Navy. My grandfather served in World War II on a destroyer. And I like the history that my last name gives me. My first name is unique to me, both in my immediate family and in my extended family, although that's not true for every family. That way, even you're in a large family gathering when your mom said, Doug, I knew who she was talking to and so did everybody else. My middle name, Sean, well, it's not really used all that much, mostly just as when I got in trouble, like Douglas, Sean, Hanson. We all knew what that meant. And we all like our last name, and we, we like to talk about our family history and all of the good, the things that were done by our family. But the reality is that sometimes when we look back in family history, not everything in our family history is good. We don't talk about that one uncle that may have gone to jail or that aunt that nobody really likes to talk to, or it could be all sorts of different things. And I think our names are an analogy of us. The reality is, is that in our past, there's a lot of things in my past that I can look at and say, wow, that was really amazing. Or there's sometimes things in my past that, things that I've done or things that were done to me that maybe I don't really want to think about or don't really want to talk about. I'm in a 12-step program. Some of you know that, some of you don't. If you don't know what a 12-step program is, think Alcoholics Anonymous, but that again, that's not the one that I'm in, but that's the one that most people know about. Um, and my group has a lot of similarities to that. And a lot of times we have people that will come into our group and they'll, 
they'll have an issue and they just want to deal with the issue. And then we say, well, yeah, let's, let's, let's work on that, but let's look back in your past and see maybe there's something that's contributing to this. Good example might be somebody that comes up, comes in with attachment issues. They have a hard time with relationships and they have a hard time committing to relationships. And every time something gets close, they run and they don't understand why. And we look at that and we can say, well, you know, maybe they grew up in a poor family and mom worked one job and dad had to work two jobs and they spent a lot of time alone at home. And without delving into the history of their past, it's really, really hard to understand why they may have attachment issues nowadays. I think one of the ones that I hear a lot from men, this is, this is a, a, a great uh, lie that I like to tell people. It says, you've all heard real men don't cry. And, and that is probably one of the worst lies that our society and culture tell men. Uh, because the reality is, is when you stuff your emotions, your body keeps score. That it comes out as um, health issues such as ulcers or things like that. It could come out um, as anger a lot of time and anger and bitterness and resentment in, in, at work or with your loved ones. And there's a multitude of ways that um, you know, real men, quote unquote, that don't cry, that stuff their, their hurt and their, their anger and, and all the rest of that, and they don't express it in a healthy way. It can even lead to substance abuse, alcoholism, and all sorts of issues. And so I'd just like to say, if you have an issue in your life and you're like, I don't really understand why I keep doing this, or I don't understand why I have this particular problem, or I don't understand what's going on, I would like to say, have a look in your past. If, if you need to, I would recommend uh, going to a counselor, um, or if you want to, there again, there are many 12-step programs out there with people that may struggle with the same issue as you, and I would encourage you to go ahead and look those people up, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, I am me, and I can hook you up with one of them. I think the key thing to remember in all of this is that we don't want to live in the past. We don't want to go back and say, well, my past defines me. My past is, you know, whatever. It, 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 the past is a good indicator of why we may have particular problems. But just like I have a three names, Douglas Sean Hansen, I think my first name can represent my future. My middle name can represent my present, my abilities, my skills, and my last name represents my past. So I say a third of my name represents my past, but the rest of it is the present and the future. And we need to always remember that while the past can help us, we shouldn't stay there. We should always look towards the future. Thank you. We will now have silence until all the ballots have been received by the chief judge. Please be patient as this may take several minutes.
It looks like we're done. Yep, great. Okay. Well, this is the part of our contest that is far more relaxed. Everybody's done an amazing job today. And I, as the Toastmaster, have the opportunity to spend some time with our contestants. I've also received some additional information that maybe other people don't have. So I get the opportunity to interview our contestants, ask them some questions, and we can all learn a little bit more about them. And I'll try to go in the order in which they spoke just so that they have a, a good idea of, of when to anticipate I might be coming around. So Michelle, that means we'll start with you. Michelle, uh, you are a very seasoned speaker. How long have you been a part of the Toastmasters organization? I have been part of Toastmasters. Somebody might have to correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe I'm going on year two. Oh, so I think that makes you somewhat of a veteran. I'll take what? Yeah. <laughs> what advice would you give to some of some of the folks who are just starting their Toastmasters journey now that you're kind of in your year two? Take the plunge, be brave, anticipate what you would define as failure but it is not failure. It is all growth. I, I no matter what, you are always at some part of your journey and learning how to be a better speaker. And it doesn't matter if you are a speaker that gets paid $20,000 to do a session. There's always something that you are learning in ways that you're growing. And the only way to learn is to do. Yes, that, that's, that is so true. I, as a newer member, have found that it definitely takes some bravery to step out in front of this group. Even though the group is incredibly supportive, it still takes, you feel that heart palpitation, oh. definitely takes stepping out in bravery. Yes, it does. Yeah. Thanks, Michelle. Thank you. And now, Josh, you are on the other end of the spectrum. <laughs> you a newer member to Toastmaster. And so I think I'm gonna ask you a question that, that kind of piggybacks on what Michelle, our veteran, the advice that she's just given. What's something that you hope to do that maybe takes you a little outside of your comfort zone in Toastmasters? Yeah, well, thank you for that introduction. Uh, I've been in the club for three months or so. Uh, I'm also new to Dell Technologies as a whole. So I've just been going through a lot of transitions um, in my life, but um, I've been looking to, you know, communicate more effectively and also be coachable, uh, be open to feedback, you know, constructive feedback. So that's an area I'm looking to grow in is, um, you know, being able to receive feedback from veteran members and anybody out there who can help mold me and form me because I'm in, you know, my brain is still technically forming, I guess. <laughs> so kind of in that in-between phase of life where, you know, I'm an adult, but there's still growth. So neuroplasticity, I really want to be able to be, you know, conformed and, you know, be able to conf uh, effectively communicate, uh, you know, both at work and then in my other relationships. Um, and I've really enjoyed the experiences I've had in the few months and really pumped up for what's to come. Yeah, you seem really excited and, and very open. Is there any part of this journey that maybe is a little intimidating or something that, that feels uncomfortable that, that uh, you're pushing yourself to do? Yeah, I, I agree with Michelle's uh, take the plunge analogy. You know, I was a lifeguard back in the day, so I definitely know exactly what she's talking about. But it was a little nerve wracking being in the competition uh, just leading up because you know, it was my first time in a competition. Uh, but at the same time, you learn by doing, you learn by experience, experiential learning. So I think if you can get it out of your own head, uh, there's a couple of great development books I've been reading, uh, you know, and I just truly believe that the more at bats I'm given, the higher my batting average will be. So this is another at bat for me. And I'm hoping to take the progress and the feedback I get and knock it out of the park, you know, next time. So it's a great, it's a great opportunity. 
Yeah, I, I think you're already knocking it out of the park. <laughs> Even as a new member, there are things that that I see that I very much admire in your speaking style. So you're you're doing a wonderful job. Thank you. And Pablo, uh, Pablo, I'm asking people questions about maybe what scares them and what intimidates them, but I'm really getting the vibe from you that uh, maybe you really like this kind of high risk. I see that you, your, your speech, you talked about wanting to be an astronaut and put yourself at risk a little bit. I know that your interests are also pretty high risk. You like outdoors, snowboarding, hiking. You seem to be a risk seeker. So is there some part about Toastmasters that kind of tickles your risk-seeking bone? Oh, yes, for sure. The main reason I joined Toastmasters was because there were, I found something else that would make me nervous, right? Uh, you mentioned that I like risk, risk, risky things, but part of the enjoyment of risky things is that adrenaline and that fear, you know, that shaking of your hands and trying to over time gain control. And <clears throat> I think uh, Toastmasters was the perfect uh, uh, area for me to jump to in an area where I knew I was weak and I always thought that I didn't have to grow. And uh, over time and with maturity, I was proven wrong. It's not about me and the things that I want. It's also about others and the things that they want. And I realized that people wanted to understand me better and people wanted me to be a better listener. So that's that's why I took this high risk uh, hobby. <laughs> yeah, high, it's high risk, but it's high reward. And yes. it's, not a, yes. it's funny because we do kind of feel like that high risk, but there's, there's a really big safety net in Toastmasters. You really can't fail. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And let's see, who do we have now? Oh, we have uh, Morton. Hey, Morton. Hello. How are you feeling after your, your contest? Relaxed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Morton, I saw, uh, I, I think, I don't know if other people know this about you, but Morton has three master's degrees. Morton. <laughs> Why would somebody get three master's degrees? Was this intentional? Was this part of your master plan? I have an amazing wife. Let me set that first of all. And uh, raising four kids and being active in community, it's uh, not always been a, a perfect uh, path, but um, it started out, I worked for a, a startup company that did computer imports and I was asked to manage the team. I had no management experience at the time. I thought, hmm, I better go to school and learn some management. So went to school, got an MBA while working full time. Um, and then after that, I got hired by a large technology company. For those of you who were born a, a little bit earlier than some of you might remember Novell. Uh, and I really wanted to get into their technical side. So I thought, okay, I need to learn um, engineering concepts. So I went to school and uh, got a computer science uh, master's. And then uh, was hired by this amazing company called Dell and uh, want to get in a better understanding of engineering concepts and, and, and management uh, practices. So then uh, went to UT for an engineering, uh, engineer, engineering master's degree, uh, also where I'm working full time. So a lot of uh, wonderful experiences. Just the more, the more I think we learn, the more questions we have and the more we learn to uh, appreciate others in the field as well. So um, grateful for the, the experiences. Yeah, you know, people talk about the Peter Principle. I don't know if you all have heard of this. The Peter Principle is basically that people get promoted to their level of incompetence. You get promoted because you do well, then you get promoted because you, you do well. But at some point, you reach a level that is beyond your abilities. This is the, the Peter principle. And I think there perhaps should be the Morton principle, which is you get promoted, you rise to the occasion. You get promoted, you rise to the occasion. That's really incredible, Morton. Uh, very generous, Bianca, thank you. 
<laughs> and then I guess you have uh, you have something in in common with with Carmen. You are both engineers, but I think something that's really unique about Carmen is that Carmen left engineering to become an educator, not like a university professor, but to work with our snot-nosed brats in school, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, Carmen I left did. engineering to go work with children. Uh, and I wonder, Carmen, when, when you came back to engineering, so Carmen's order was engineering, working with children, back to engineering. Mm -hmm. I wonder when you came back to Dell, whether your experience teaching children impacted how you came back as an engineer the second time around? That's an interesting question. It's funny, I, I never consider myself as one of the older members, but on my team, that I am older than some of the members on my team. And what I have uh, been able to draw from is not just my education background, but also my parenting background. So it's been very interesting to encourage and share and say, you can get through this and you can do this. Those were the same things that I did when I was teaching. It's inherent to my personality though. I, I taught because I loved children. I taught because I loved seeing the best in people. Having kids though is what made me understand why it's so important to teach and to see the best in, in people. So I am using all these life experiences and combined with my Christian, I'm a strong Christian. So combined with all my backgrounds of spirituality, um, um, parenting, life experience, being a teacher, all those help to pull together who I am and how I show up daily. I had to recently give a presentation about who I am. And so I did a little, I guess a little chart, a little bubble, and it showed all these different facets of who I am. And so in order to show up as much as I pull from that teaching background, I also pull from every other background because it's what makes me who I am uniquely and beautifully. Carmen, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I have to admit that since becoming a parent, I definitely approached my my team and my coworkers differently in a positive way. I know, with a little more, yes, a little more of this. <laughs> yes. Yes, as let's see who who is who is saying that, you know, with that frequency comes fluency. So yes, I think you have a lot of opportunities when you work with children to and that perhaps carries over into into your work life. And Bianca, let me just clarify, I am not an engineer. Uh, I graduated in, uh, in Japanese with a minor in statistics. That's probably I went back to school to get some additional education so I could to measure up with all you smart folks. <laughs> well, I think you also have one of your masters is in computer science. I guess that that doesn't make you an engineer. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And and now Doug, let's see, do we have Doug? Did you disappear? Hey. Hey Doug, how are you feeling after your contest? Eh, I feel okay. Yeah. Your your topic was a a seemingly really personal one. What inspired you to take such a personal approach today? just sounded like a good topic yeah. I don't I don't really have a particular reason why I chose that one over another one I just thought it was a fun one it was it, it was it was really compelling and um, felt very heartfelt and really appreciate your you know sharing that with with the group well Thank you so much, everybody, all of our contestants. Thanks for participating, for putting yourself out there, for being so brave and for, for sharing a little bit of yourself with us. And I think that now I'm going to hand control back to our chief judge, uh, who I hope will announce the winners. Great, thank you so much, Bianca. And I will start sharing. Oh, there we go. Can you see it? 
we'll start sharing my screen here. Uh, sorry, I can see your videos. Did someone nod? You can see the screen. Okay, great. Thank you. So just a reminder, Bianca has said it a few times, but we do have our next levels taking place So the area K-12. If you're unaware, we are in area K-12. So our area contest is Saturday, March 4th. Then the division contest for our division, K-12. So K is on March 25th and then the district. Now, I do know we also have another dignitary in the room. And I would like to give this opportunity to Brian Thrasher to announce when his contest is, because I know that all of us, when we have contests, we are asking for volunteers. So Brian. Thank you, Ava. So J25, area J25 is having its area contest on February 25th at 9 a.m. Central time. And we definitely are still looking for people who want to volunteer for any of the positions. If you'd like to be a judge or if you just want to be a timer but see other people participate or you want to do your leadership project and be a chief judge or a, sorry, contest chair, we're still looking for everything. So please let me know. Thank you, Ava. Perfect. And that is a virtual contest? Yes, indeed. Perfect, thank you so much. And I have been asked to announce that there is also a contest in person in Georgetown on February 9th, and they are also looking for judges. So if any of our members here, if you are interested in judging a contest, it is a club contest and it's in person. It'll give you exposure to an in-person contest. So please reach out to me if you are interested in volunteering for any of the contests, including Brian's, the one in Georgetown and our upcoming area contest. Enough about that. Why don't we start getting into the results? So first off, big congratulations. Thank you all to all of our amazing participants. You did great. And it's, tell you what, participating in a contest as a participant is something I hate doing. I don't like it. I'm scared of it. It's not my thing. So you guys just did something that I don't even like to do myself. So I'm very, very proud of you taking that plunge. It takes great courage. So great job. So I just heard yes. next year you're competing instead of being. The no, 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 I did it. I, I can't, I can't because I'm an area director. So I cannot compete next year. Ha. All right. Uh, I have, I participated once and I lost to my mentee who then went over to participate in our district conference. So I am totally fine with losing to him and I don't have to do it again. I did it once. So just want to go over. We do have really awesome certificates for all of our amazing participants. You will get a copy of these. So, woohoo! All right, you ready for some results? I don't see you excited. Are you ready for results? Woo! Okay. So, for our table topics contest, there were. Can I no just say we can all come off mute and be excited. Totally. I you can totally come off that. Mute. <laughs> Come on, encourage mute. that. Let's be excited and loud. Yeah, let's Woo! be loud. Let me this thing. <laughs> <laughs> the official official wording here. So there were no time disqualifications for table yeah. topics. There were no originality disqualifications. Yay! So now we will proceed. We will start with third place and move on from there. So drum roll, please. Do, 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 do. That's the best drum roll I got. <laughs> so our third place winner is Josh. Yay. Yay. Yay, Josh. Yay. You will get you will get these certificates. We'll email them to you. So Josh is our third place winner. Woohoo! Woo nice. Our second place winner, who will represent Dell Master Speakers at the Area K-12 contest on Saturday, March 4th, should the first place winner be unable to attend, is... Martin! <laughs> Yay, Martin! And I just figured out, I've been saying Morton's last name wrong, so I'm going to try it. It is... I know, me too. Lutera. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Plundra. 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 All right. And now 
the first place winner for our table topics contest who will represent Dell Master Speakers in our area K-12 contest on Saturday, March 4th is... Michelle! Woo! You see my pause for dramatic yeah. effect? Yeah. <laughs> Golly. Yay! So congratulations, table topic winners. That's my round of applause for you. All right. Oh, that was amazing. Are you ready for international? Yes. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> All righty. And I do have my little script here. So for our international contest, there were no time disqualifications. There were no originality disqualifications. There is no third place winner because there was no third place. <laughs> so our second place winner, well, I guess actually this one I probably should have started with first. Eh, our, well, yeah, I probably should. Darn. Oh, well, um, you're supposed to do it the other way around. Lessons learned. But I'm just going to do it this way because this is how we do it. Our second place winner who will, will represent Dell Master Speakers in A Area K-12 on Saturday, March 4th, should the first place winner be unable to attend is, and there's still excitement because even though you're second place, you still rock and we're so proud, is, uh, which then leads. Hey, Doug. Carmen will represent us at our Area K-12 contest on March 4th, unless she is unable to attend. Thank you. Thank you. With that, actually, that is it. Da -da -da -da. Da -da -da -da. So I will pass it over to Candy for final remarks and sing. Absolutely. I just want to say thank you to everyone that attended today. Double, double extra congratulations to all of the contestants. You all did a fantastic job. I am so proud of everybody that competed. I will find a way to get Ava to compete again someday. I will, I will, I will. With her saying no, I will. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you to the team that helped me put this contest on. It has been a push. I appreciate it very much. Thank you to all of our guests and dignitaries today. Again, as much as it's been a push, I can also say it's been a bit of fun. So I encourage you, especially if you're in the Dell Master Speakers Club, to consider supporting some of the other area clubs and supporting other contests as well. This is how we get the great people that support our contests. It takes a team to make the dream, right? So I encourage everyone to support other teams. Thank you, Reed. I do see your comment in the chat. I do think it was a wonderful contest. Thank you very much. With that, I'm just going to say again, thank you, thank you, thank you to the contestants, to the guests, to the members of our club. I appreciate everything you do. I appreciate you. Much love. And with that, I'm going to give everybody 14 minutes back in your day. Andy, would you mind staying on for a quick debrief about how we think yeah. the contest went? Thank you, everyone. Great job. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, everyone. Congratulations. 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 Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Aloha. <laughs> All right. And just read. I'm not read, but. <laughs> oh, and then he's gone. We did it. Yay. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Wait. <laughs>